Um, it is called God makes something out of nothing. And I really sensed as I was enjoying the service so far. Um, you know those services where everything seems to fit together and you feel like there's a conspiracy going on? That's, that's kind of the feeling I had, but I'm a part of it, so I guess the Lord is up to something. So God makes something out of nothing. I want to open with a scripture. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13, and then 15 to 18. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believe and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentarily affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transcendent, but the things that are unseen are eternal. I want to open with a short word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this morning, Lord. I thank you for the, for the simple blessings, God, that you have given us. Thank you, God, that we can gather here, Lord. Thank you for the leadership, God. Thank you for everybody who serves, God, to make all of this happen, Lord, for the glory of your name. Lord, I want to ask for your spirit, Father, to, to give your spirit abundantly to us this morning, Lord. Holy Spirit, that you may minister, God, to every single heart that needs uplifting, God, and that needs a deepening of the character of who you are, God, a deeper understanding. Lord, will you give freely to us this morning, Father, and will you bless us in this time? I pray, God, that, that your name will receive all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, the question today that really came to me is, do we understand God's blessings? Do we understand His blessings when we, when we look around us, when we have a time of thanksgiving and we are looking for our blessings and we are trying to have a grateful heart and we are trying to see what, what can we thank God for? Are we looking for how good are we doing financially? Thank you for our health. Thank you for all those things that we can see. Or do we understand that we are not of this world? So it might very well be that the biggest blessings that God is giving us are not necessarily to be seen in this world and are not necessarily of this world. Do we understand that God's kingdom is not, is not of this world either? God's kingdom is His people, is His soul inside of the people that we see around us. His kingdom is, is His presence and His character revealed to the hearts of people. So can we see where God is truly blessing us where God is truly reaching out to us and where God is truly taking us in our life can we see can we see this morning that God wants to speak life through you to people sometimes through suffering sometimes through things that we don't understand but because he has an eternal purpose for your life and you might not understand the circumstances but can we see this morning that God wants to speak eternal life through us and eternal hope through us that can change the course of direction of someone's life in Matthew 6 31 to 33 it says therefore do not be anxious saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the Gentiles seek after these things and your father in heaven knows that you need them all but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you so this is a scripture that I have heard many times, but, but what is the Lord really saying here? I was, I was praying over that and I was thinking about it. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me. God is not saying here, you're not allowed to seek after that. It's not right to seek after that. It's just, he's saying, listen, the people that don't know me, they're seeking after that. But they don't have life. I have given you life, I have given you my spirit and there is life inside of you that I put inside of you. And through that life, you have opportunities to speak to people, to seek my kingdom, those souls, and to speak to them words of life and words of hope that can make an eternal difference. Don't worry about yourself, 
Your life is too valuable to worry about yourself, to worry about your own provisions. I will take care of you. Please look after my people. Look after those souls that are so hungry to hear a word of light and a, a word of hope in a time that is so dark. And, and even an area here that is so dark where there's so ma ma much confusion about who God truly is and what the attributes of God truly are and what the evidence of God truly is. So what will show these people that God is still very present in this society? It will be the words and the actions that the souls of those people truly see in you. So God is saying, don't worry for yourself. I'll worry for you. Your time is too valuable to just only work for your own provision. My God is a God over the storm. He's God over the pit. And there's always people watching. No matter where we go, if we are Christians, if we believe in Jesus Christ, then we walk according to, to His purposes. If we walk according to to what he has lived before us people will always see people will always hear hey that person is claiming to know God and they might they might not seem that they're listening but they are and they're watching you oh they're watching I know so I want to tell a little story about Daniel Daniel got taken out of his own country he was brought into into a different one he was smart and he was blessed by the Lord and he became an influential person in, in the king's household he, he, he got to give him advice and, and to be very closely to the king and as he grew in favor with the king the king took a per decided in his heart that he was going to make him an overseer in the country and other men were not that happy with him but they knew he served God they were watching and so they came up with this with this idea we're going to put a law into place which seems to really honor the king but we want to get rid of Daniel so we're just going to put in a law that requires everybody to only ask for a period of time, only ask the king for advice and no one else. Then Daniel has to like either back down from his faith, but he'll probably not do that, so he will come in disfavor with the king. And they say, if someone does that, we're going to put them in the lion's den. Now, no one, I'm pretty sure, had ever survived that, so that was a good remedy. So they come to the king. The king likes the idea... But then we read Daniel 6, verse 15 to 20. The man that accused Daniel. These men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, King, O king, that it is a law of Medes and Persians, that no injunction or ordinance that the king established can be changed. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God whom you serve continue to deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it, sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went into his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him, and his sleep fled from him. Then at break day the king arose and went in, in haste to the lion's den. And he came near to the den where Daniel was, and he cried out in a tone of anguish, the, the king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? So here's the cry that we saw in this king's life. He knew Daniel was serving God continually. We read that. And when Daniel faces this impossible situation that nobody ever survived, the deepest pit you can get in, and then there's lions at the bottom, the moment this king comes to the pit, his cry in his heart is, Has your God been able to deliver you? Has your God been able? And we do not read that Daniel was in despair before he went into the pit. So there was a calmness and a trust in Daniel's life that he knew that he served God. And he knew he didn't deny his God. And if this was his end, he was probably fine with it. But he trusted his God to be faithful over him. And, and the cry of so many people around us, when they see our afflictions, when they see the things we go through, because our lives are not easier than the people outside of this church. But they see you, and they're wondering, when you face those hard things, terrible things, confusing things, 
they're watching. And the cry in their heart is, is your God able to deliver? I've heard you speak about it. I know you go to church. But when it really comes down to it, is your God able to deliver you? Because or else it's just religion and a waste of your time and definitely mine. Then I'm not coming to church. People are watching you. You might not feel good enough for ministry. You might see all your failure and, and your sins and all the things that you don't do good enough. Or you hear all the things that other people say about you. Or not even that. You hear yourself talk about yourself because you see all the people that seems to do it so well. And you wonder if you will ever be good enough to be used by God. Or to do ministry in a church. Maybe you wonder if you are good enough to ever be a good husband or a good wife. To be good to your children because you see yourself fail and fail again. Or just maybe even being a Christian at all. Maybe you don't even feel comfortable calling yourself a Christian because when you look in the mirror you really don't feel like it. But that's, that's the gospel. We do not have to be good enough. Our God makes something out of nothing. Our God makes something out of nothing. That is my life. And that is every Christian's life. God takes your nothing and He turns it into something. And how He does it, He does it. But he says, I'm going to take you and I'm going to make a new creation. And you will testify of my name. You will be a witness unto my name. I think this morning, we really have to let go of what we think that we should be today. It is so easy to see where we should have been today. Instead of thanking God for where he brought us from. And thanking Him for what He made us to be today. We are today exactly what God intended for us to be today. And through obedience we walk out what we can be tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow in the power of God. In the power of His Holy Spirit inside of us. Maybe if I look into my own life and, and I hear a lot of people talk around me. So it's been almost the same topic. When I look at, at the future, and I don't know where I'm going to be two months from now, which is sometimes pretty disturbing, but, but God really spoke to me. Is the blood enough? Is it enough to know that I have showed you that I love you? And now in those moments, is that enough to simply say, the Word says that God will provide. The Word says that it is His pleasure to give me direction. Now in those times, can you stand and can you sing before the victory is there? Can you give thanks before you see in the natural the blessing that is going to come from my hand? What is the difference between unbelievers and us if we, as soon as we see the lions then, in total despair, fall to the ground and start crying? What is the difference if we do not personally know God? Because if you know God and if you come in God's presence, there is an assurance, assurance that God loves you. And that His promises are true that nothing and no pastor and no church can ever teach you. And that is only found in that still quiet place where we take time to listen and to surrender to God everything in our life. Will we trust God and what He said? Or are we going to trust our feelings and the circumstances that we see? What do we trust? Do we trust what we feel and what we see around us? And let that tell us who God is? Or do we trust what God has done in the past and do we trust Him now for the future when we see a little darkness coming our way? Maybe you do not experience God right now. That may, might very well be that you for a while have not experienced God. And that's okay. It might very well be, I've seen that in my own life, where God says, I really don't want you to feel me right now. I really want you to learn to trust me. I have showed myself faithful. I have brought you from so much and in this time can you can you learn to trust me can you hold on to my words when you are shaken instead of holding on to your feelings can you move forward because of what I have done is the blood enough is the blood enough in the face of your enemies in the face of your insecurities in the face of maybe financial difficulties when family seems to be unsaved or maybe you are very sure that they are unsaved and you seem 
to not be able to reach them in the face of ministry which can be very discouraging sometimes in the face of not having any direction is the blood enough to just thank God for today and what we have today and that we have enough for today can we thank him for the things that we don't see yet that he might have promised to us earlier but we don't see how it is going to be we don't see that it is going to be but can we say my God make something out of nothing and I'm not going to back down now I'm going to trust him and I will declare my faith and I will speak out of my faith instead of out of my feeling and my circumstances in Matthew 13 verse 45 and 46 it says again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all he had and bought it now this is a very simple scripture I grew up in church I was definitely not saved but I grew up in church and I heard this scripture many times I heard it in Sunday school I heard it preached on I heard it many times but I never understood it and even coming through Bible school uh, I never heard this scripture explained different than what I had ever heard. Um, and a few months ago when I was in prayer and I, I, I was in that time where God seemed to not really speak to me, all of a sudden he spoke to me and I, he brought this scripture to my mind and he said, Stan, you never understood. And he touched me greatly and changed every time God does that I change. And he said, you never understood it. You always thought that you are that merchant and my kingdom is that pearl and you are to search for it and when you find it you will be willing and you will have to let go of everything and hold on to my kingdom and you will possess it he said but Stan you never understood it you never did that merchant was me and I came into that world and I saw you as that pearl and when I found you I left everything behind, I sold everything I had so I could simply purchase you. Stan, you are that pearl to me. And that is how God views us. And you know what the beautiful thing is about a pearl? A pearl starts out as a piece of sand or a piece of dirt. There's a billion of them and it's worth nothing, it's useless altogether. But when that piece of sand or that piece of dirt comes into an oyster, over time, that piece of sand or that piece of dirt starts to turn into a pearl of great value great value and God says I see you as that pearl you might see yourself as that piece of sand or that piece of dirt but when you are in Christ I see you as that pearl and I see you as sanctified I see you as holy because of what my son has done and you might not always see it on your outside but you are completely sanctified and what I see in you I'm gonna work out of you and if you simply obey that still small voice of the Holy Spirit more and more you start to see the the character traits of God coming out of you coming out of you because on the inside God sees he is already justified she is already justified you are already holy he has already done the work you are a pearl I want to take a moment of prayer all together where I want to pray for us to thank God in the hard places that we might be in, that some of us are in, and, and also to reveal the gospel in a deeper way to our hearts. So if you would join me, you can, you can join me in prayer in whatever way you're comfortable with. You can come to the front, you can do whatever you like will stand Almighty Father Lord I, I thank you God for this for this simple word God that you revealed to my heart God and I thank you Lord for all your mercy and all your grace God that you have given each and every single one of us this morning Lord to even simply be here God God we have sick people in our midst Lord we have people in our midst God that are struggling with so many different things Lord with family situations God with finances Lord and I want to ask you Lord God only you can give us a grateful heart God by revealing Lord your love for us by revealing God what you have already given us God in Christ Lord and I ask you this morning God to reveal to every single heart God 
what you have done, Lord. Who they are in Christ, Lord. That they are that pearl, God, of great value in your eyes, Jesus. That you are willing, God, to leave everything behind for that one pearl that you found of great value, Father. Will you reveal to the hearts of our, every single one of us, Father, this morning, God, what that means, God. What that truly means, God, so we may know, God, who we are in you, God. Who we are through you, Father, and how we are to look at ourselves, Lord, and at our neighbors, Lord. God, I pray, Father, that you will give comfort, God, where there is distress, God. I pray, God, that you will make us bringers of hope, God, wherever we go, God. God, I pray, Lord, that your light will shine bright today, God. And not only today, God, but wherever we go, God, and wherever you have placed us, Lord. God, may your glory always be seen in our lives, God, as we saw, Lord, in the story of Daniel, God, you write our story, God. And we do not always see, Father, why we are approaching the lion's dens, Lord. But you are writing a story, God, and you deliver us, Father, because you already know what is down the road. And you write your own testimony, Father. And so many times, without words, people see that you deliver. And people see faith. And people see that there is a God because you write your story, God, in our lives. God, I pray that you will give us great comfort, God, over the things in our lives, God, that we might not understand at this point. Promises that we have waited on for so long. God, I pray that the glory will be yours, Father, and that we will speak and pray and thank you, God, out of faith because you have been faithful in our past and you have proven yourself to be the God that you said you would be, Lord. You've been with us. You've been for us, God. And I pray, God, that we will take a stand for your name in this time. For the glory of your name, Lord. Amen.